in August 1890 when Rizal arrived in Madrid. He immediately sought the help of the Filipino colony to seek justice for his family together with Marcelo H. Del Pilar, who acted as his lawyer and Dr. Dominador Gomez, the secretary of the Association Hispano-Filipina. Rizal called Senor Febi, the Minister of Colonies, but nothing came out with the interview. As El Regimen, a Madrid newspaper which sympathized with the Filipino cause said, To cover the ears, open the pores, and fold the arms, this is the Spanish colonial policy. As Rizal was waging a futile fight for justice, more temple news reached him. From his brother-in-law, Silvestre Ubaldo, he received a copy of ejectment order by the Dominican against Francisco Rizal and other Calamba tenants. From his sister, Saturnina, he learned of the deportation of Pasiano, Antonio, Silvestre, Teong, and Dandoy to Mindoro. They were arrested in Calamba and were shipped out of Manila on September 6, 1890, and he further forcibly ejected from their home and were then living in the house of Narcisa. He tried to find someone who could help but no one could. When he's barely starting to settle down in Madrid, experience another disappointment in August 1989. His friend and talented co-worker in the propaganda movement, Jose Maria Panganiban died after a lingering illness. Also, August 1989 was a day of mourning to numerous Filipinos in Europe. And what a fatal coincidence on the same month, day, and year, this past we had to deplore the death of another friend and countryman, Feliciano Gonzalez Timbang. And also, that time, did you know that Antonio Luna felt bitter towards Rizal? Towards the end of August 1890, Rizal attended the social reunion of the Filipinos in Madrid. Since it was a party, wine was served and as they drink more. Almost of them were drunk and one of them was Antonio Luna. At that time, he was bitter because of his frustrated romance with Nelly Boston. That deep in his heart, he was blaming Rizal for his failure to win her. Through Rizal, he personally cleared his side about it. With a drunken state and jealousy which eating him up, that he couldn't control himself and uttered unsavory remarks about me. Rizal heard him. His high sense of chivalry could not tolerate any slur against the honor of any woman. Angered by the slanderous remarks, he challenged Luna to a do a duel. The Filipinos were shocked by the incident they tried to pacify Luna and Rizal, pointing out of, to both that such a duel would cause a damage in Spain. When Luna became a sober, he realized what he did and then apologized to Nelly and Rizal, which he immediately accepted his apology and became good friends again. Let's have some trivia about the traits of Rizal. He was by nature nor hot-tempered nor progracious, but when the honor of his people, woman, or friends was tainted, he never hesitated to fight even he is risking his own life. On another occasion, he challenged another man to a duel. He is Wenceslao I. Retana, his bitter enemy of the pen. Retana was a press agent of the priors in the Spain. He used to attack the Filipinos, including Rizal and his family, such as insulted, steered Rizal to action. He sent his second Retana with his challenge to a duel. Only Retana's blood or his apology could vindicate the good name of Rizal's family and friends. Because of the challenges and conditions that Rizal's had given, it made Retana silence. Afterwards, he developed a great admiration for Rizal that he even wrote the first booklet biography of the greatest Filipino hero, whose talents he came to recognize and whose martyrdom he glorified.
In the autumn of 1890, Rizal was feeling bitter at so many disappointments he encountered in Madrid. One night, when he and his friend attended a party at Theater Apollo, his gold watch chain with a locket containing with the picture of Leonor Rivera, his beloved sweetheart, the loss of it proved to be a bad man. Early in December 1890, he received a letter from Leonor, announcer, announcing her coming marriage to an Englishman. It was her mother choice and she was asking for forgiveness. The letter was a great blow to him. He was stunned. His eyes were dim with tears and his heart was broken. Blue Reed was his only friend who knew what happened and gave him words of encouragement as he was deeply hurt with the disappointment he was experiencing. Towards the closing days of 1890, an unfortunate rivalry between Isa Rizal and Marcelo H. Del Pilar for supremacy arose. Rizal was the most talented Filipino in his time until then the undisputed leader of the Filipinos in Europe. On the other hand, Del Pilar, the peerless lawyer journalist, was gaining prestige in Madrid for his vigorous editorials in La Solidaridad in which he came to own. So, as a leader, Rizal tried to involve his compatriots with his own idealism for he believed that to gain prestige for the propaganda movement and also to win the respect of the Spanish people. Unfortunately, his idealism was not um, shared by certain frivolous countrymen who loved wine, women, and as well as cards. Consequently, Rizal's leadership declined. Some of his admirers who supported him turned against him because they resented his interference in their private lives that they became Del Pilar's um, supporter. The rivalry grew that to avert it. The Filipinos in Madrid met on January 1, 1891, the New Year's Day, to patch up their differences and to intensify the campaign for reform. It was decided in the meeting that a leader called Responsable be chosen to direct the affairs of the Filipino community and to determine the editorial policy of La Solidaridad. Owing to Del Pilar opposition, the proposition to place La Solidaridad under the control of the Responsable was abandoned. The meeting proceeded by the business of electing the responsable. It was agreed that the res responsable should be elected by the two-thirds vote of the Filipino community. The election took place during the first week of February 1891. The Filipino were divided into hostile camps, the Rizalistas and the Pilaristas. On the first two days of voting, Rizal could not obtain the two-thirds vote to be proclaimed as the responsible. But Rizal graciously declined the covey position. He was a man of honor and dignity with a high sense of delicadeza, which many of the politicians in all ages seldom possess. So he did not relish being a leader of a divided people. He knew some of the patriots who supported Del Pilar this peace or dislike him, so he preferred to abdicate his leadership so, rather than be the cause of disunity and bitterness of among his countrymen. He wrote a brief note thanking his compatriots electing him as responsible. Sadly, he packed up his bag, paid his bills, and boarded a train leaving for Biarritz. As his pulled out of the railway station, he gazed through its window at the city of Madrid. When he was happy on during his First to join, but unhappy in his second visit, it was the last time he saw Madrid. His agonizing heart bade goodbye to Metropolis, of which he had written years ago. 